Hi there, Tim here again. Welcome to Advanced Voxel Mancy 201. Today we're going to expand a little bit on the lessons from Advanced Voxel Mancy 101, where we covered how to create center dots, center lines, and center planes, and one-eighth voxels. You'll note, by the way, that uh, all of the uh, shapes that we created in Advanced Voxel Mancy 101 fall inside the shape of a prime or standard voxel cube and they all bisect the origin or center point of that prime voxel. Today we're going to cover uh, some mega voxels and also offset voxels. Offset voxels are voxels that do not pass through the center point or the origin of a standard voxel. I have three different ways we're going to cover how to create some of these uh, elements. The first one is by utilizing uh, some voxel shapes that we already have. First thing I'm going to do, however, is take my uh, reactor cube here and we're going to place it a handful of times over here so we have uh, some nice neat locations uh, to place some of the elements that we're going to be creating. Alright, so if I take my center point right here and I place it inside of a reactor and then go up one and place it again you'll see that what I get is a line. can't see the line but it's there. It goes from the center to one up. Now there's actually two voxels in this space. There's this one and the one that I just placed we're going to copy the center one and undo and paste so that we and paste so that we only have the one voxel but it's stretched. So there's the first of our shapes. If we take the top and paste it twice, inverting it along the way, well, now we have another shape it's actually a line that goes from here to, you know, a, a full uh, two spaces. If we take this center line, which is a little hard to grab, you'll see, but if we get it right there, there we go, and we copy, and we're going to head and do the same thing here. We're going to paste it and go one sideways. Copy, undo, paste. So now we have another shape. And again, repeating that process, we want the big side. And inverting. So now we have that shape too. And we can repeat that process again in along the next axis. So we can go ahead and paste it there and stretch that space, copy our stretched version, and replace there. And again, utilizing just the stretched outside, pasting it there, and inverting and getting there you'll see that from that one center dot we managed to achieve a whole bunch of different shapes um, and some of the variations on those shapes you can probably extrapolate on your own but the principle is by utilizing a small dot like this and by stretching lines and stretching shapes between thinner shapes and smaller shapes we can create larger shapes. And this one right here is actually one of our main um, sort of shapes that we play with, or that I play with, um, and it's particularly useful, I think. The second way that we can create larger megaboxel shapes is utilizing the Add tool. Again, I'm going to 
replace a couple of reactor blocks right here. And we're going to go ahead and utilize our add tool. Now when I click the add tool in the current implementation of the interface, it's down here. We're going to choose shape selection. And you'll note that we have a standard grouping of some other shapes that you can create. The one I'm particularly interested in right now is this slope corner inside shape. And I'm going to just drop a copy of it down right here. Um, and uh, let's paint it in a color that makes it easier to see. All right. Um, so that's that shape right there. And if I take that shape and paste it into my reactor, replacing the corners with the beveled shape to the inside. You see that we can basically get ourselves a stretched version of a voxel along one axis like that. And again, if I take this and we can go ahead and place it into this reactor, um, inverting top and bottom. Of course, we can get that shape. Now, if I take this shape right here, um, let's create another reactor. If I take this shape right here, and I place it like that, and I'm actually going to go ahead and paint it. Now it's one voxel, but it's three voxels high. All right. Now I'm going to paste another copy of that voxel where this one is, except I'm going to paste it one lower. So that would be where it is, and that would be one lower. So now we have two voxels here. We have the voxel, first voxel that we painted, brown, and we have the second voxel we just painted or just placed that's white. If I pick up the brown voxel, you'll see that when I pasted the white voxel, it sort of trimmed and we get our first offset voxel. You will note that in this voxel, none of the visible area of our voxel passes through the origin of our prime voxel. And what are we going to do with this voxel, you ask me? Well, it's particularly useful if you want to not cause distortion between two different elements. So if I place this voxel here, now you'll note that it looks like a normal voxel, except that it really is where that selection box is. It looks like it's here, but it's actually here. And if I go and take another voxel, like this one, actually, I really want that corner, and I come over here, and I bring it up like this, I set it down right there. Well, we actually have the brown voxel is actually there. And the white voxel is actually there. And there's a space between them. Because there's a space between them, they don't actually react to each other. And because they don't react to each other, they don't distort each other. So if I want to have one shape that's this size and one shape that's the other size, and I want them to actually stay where they are, then I need to create that shape between them. By using offset voxels, I'm able to do that. So we've created three more shapes right here that we're going to add to our toolkit for right now. I'll do a couple of undos right there. We can go ahead and add these over here too. A 
Station neat. All right. Now the third way that we're going to get mega voxel uh, shapes is using the line tool. So I created a platform right here. It's really just um, a slab that's 15 units across, um, 16 units down, um, and another slab below it. It's again 15 by 16. We particularly interested in this 15 size shape um, or 16 size shape right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the um, line tool and we're going to grow it out to be four voxels uh, in size. We're going to put it up in our upper corner on the 16 uh, voxel size corner top there. And then we're going to uh, create down to here and we're going to go to the 14 space like that. Now you'll note that when we do this we get all sorts of artifacts. All right, The line tool is imperfect um, and normally we would complain about these artifacts and say crap I want to use the line tool and it's making all this ugly stuff but we're actually uh, going to exploit this particular bug um, to give ourselves a couple of shapes here. And so we're going to go ahead and place um, a couple more reactors. For uh, future use right there. Now the one that's particularly useful right at this very moment is that one. And you'll see that What's notable about this is as it reacted, it grew out to this point. Well, that point is kind of useful. Um, the game engine's going, stretching things out, trying to find a place to be, and it, it kind of overshot and wound up with this particularly interesting little uh, uh, shape right here. If we go and we drop this into our reactor, you'll see that what it's doing is pushing this corner right here out. Um, pretty neatly straight out a good you know half voxel outside the three voxel shape and this corner right here this light green corner if I go ahead and place it into a reactor in all four corners or all eight corners like this, inverting again as we go. You'll see that what we're growing is a very large megavoxel. And this megavoxel right here, um, to the best of my knowledge, is the largest megavoxel that's currently uh, creatable in the game. And it has a couple of bugs attached to it. The first one is that it's absolutely impossible to actually grab the center using the selection tool. So, um, I mean, by, by direct clicking, if I go and I click um, a, a location below it and go up until I'm in the center and then copy, I can, in fact, copy out that voxel. So that is actually one voxel. Okay, the giant, giant, giant mega voxel, and it's well three by three voxel stretched an extra half voxel outside that shape um, in each direction. So essentially, it takes up the space of four voxels across in each direction, starting at the half. And the nice thing about this voxel, particularly useful thing about this voxel, besides the fact that we're going to make some offset voxels from it, um, you can utilize it just as it is. Uh, to, f to fill large spaces with smaller voxels. If I were to paint this same space using individual voxels, it would take 64 voxels total. Four, four across, four down, by f you know, four times four times four um, is 64 voxels. So if you're, for instance, filling a swimming pool with water, which you have to go mine um, and then create, I can either fill the swimming pool with 
64 voxels, or I can fill it with one voxel. Um, and uh, that saves you an awful lot of water. Um, same thing is true of gold. You want to build a giant gold block, make yourself a nice mega voxel, um, and uh, then you can utilize uh, one, one gold brick instead of 64 gold bricks um, and save yourself uh, a couple of big headaches. So the other thing here is that um, you can, of course, and you should when storing this cube, actually um, select the whole reactor. So we're going to go ahead and place this one over here into our little reactor wall that we're working on. And you'll see as I, from the highlight version there, you can see that it's got the mega voxel surrounded by the reactor. So that one's going to take up a whole lot of space, but there it is. All right. And there's some other interesting shapes in here that I will leave you mostly to discover on your own. But I can go hunting for various shapes, place them into my reactor. Let's say I grab this one or this one, or this one, grab this one right here, and I place it into my reactor. I'm going to get this shape right there, and this one right here behaves a little bit differently than the other one. in that it is um, flush on two sides with the 3x3. Three three. So this is a completely different shape. And there you go. So, again, this one, we can go ahead and select this and that. So there's our reactor inside of our mega voxel. And we'll go ahead and we'll add this one to our little collection over here. Now, Um, so there you go. Three different ways to create megavoxel shapes. And just like I created the offset voxel using this one right here, I can create offset voxels using these other shapes. If I grab the center of this megavoxel, Right here and then I go out one and drop it again then the first one that I placed so this is the second one I placed is right there the first one I placed is right there and I copy that drop that in a reactor, you'll see that what we've gotten is an offset slab. All right. So you can now play with these shapes and we will talk a little bit more about how to utilize these shapes in Advanced Voxelmancy 301. Thank you very much, and uh, enjoy voxelmancing.